Hello, welcome to another OMG AS Chemistry video. Today we're going to be looking at the double titrations. Now, a double titration is used when we've got a mixture of bases. So we're going to have to do two titrations because I've got one base which requires one mole of acid and I've got another base which requires two moles of acid. So we've got a lot of analysis to do here. The goal of this analysis is to calculate the concentration of each of these bases in the sample, okay? I want to know how much concentration have I got of sodium hydroxide in this case and how much have I got of sodium carbonate. So we're going to crack straight on with this, okay? The first thing we're going to look at is write the reactions occurring during titer 1, okay? So we're going to work out what is happening in that first titration, so let's look at A first. Well, the first thing in Titer 1, the reaction 1 is happening, okay? There's a reaction 1 happens in one stage. So NaOH is added to hydrochloric acid, and we're going to form a salt and water, okay? Now, because reaction 2 requires two moles of acid, it happens in two parts. So the sodium carbonate becomes sodium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay, now if we combine these together, the actual reaction we're getting in this initial titration then, so we're going to form some water and we're going to form some sodium hydrogen carbonate. So we're going to neutralise all of the sodium hydroxide, we're going to neutralize one, we're going to provide one mole to the sodium carbonate, and we're going to leave one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is yet to be neutralized. So that's what's happening in titer one. So we've done the first bit. Next thing I want to know is calculate the number of moles of acid required to turn phenylphthalein pink. So it's a titration calculation. The first thing I know is I'm going to calculate number of moles by doing concentration times volume. So I need to go up and I need to find the concentration of the acid and the volume used for titration 1. And I'm going to highlight this information in blue so you can see it. So we've got 14 centimetres cubed of 0 0.7. So I'm going to just plug those numbers in. So we've got equals 0 0.7 times 14.4 divided by a thousand and this is going to give me 0 0.01008 moles. Now that's the number of moles required to neutralize this. Okay, so the number so we needed 0 0.1 0 0.01008 moles of acid to neutralize these. So next thing I need to do is I'm going to neutralize the number of moles required to turn the methyl orange orange. So I'm now going to be looking in that second titration. So further 4.5 centimeters cubed of the same acid, so it's going to be the same concentration required. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I've got the number of moles of HDL, C times V, is the same concentration, yet this time only 4.5 centimeters cubed were required. And this is going to give me a concentration of 3.15 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Now, let's actually put this in perspective. What happened here then? Okay. So in that second titration, this reaction occurred. We added hydrochloric acid to sodium hydrogen carbonate. We're going to form a salt, we formed water, and we formed carbon dioxide. Now what I want you to notice is that in that reaction, the one, it is one to one. Okay, I've got, for every one mole of hydrochloric acid, I've got one mole of NaCH3. So, also is going to equal exactly the same. There. 
Now, the next thing I wanted to spot is if I go back to title one, we can see for every one mole of hydrogen carbonate produced, we have one mole of sodium carbonate. So that's also one to one, which means that my total number of moles of this then is also 3.15 times 10 to the 3. So I've now worked out the number of moles of carbonate. Now the next thing they want me to do is calculate the number of moles of NaOH. Now, what I want you to see here is we calculated the number of moles overall of acid in that first titration. Now, can you notice that I've effectively, for every two moles of acid, I've got two moles of base. So my total base has also got to add up to 0 0.01008. So let's look at, so I know for E, go back to that, my number of moles of base total equals 0 0.01008. And I know that for my number of moles of base, it must be my moles of NaOH plus my moles of sodium carbonate. So, let's just plug these numbers in then. I know I've got 0 0.01008 of this. I've got 3.15 times 10 to the minus 3 of this. So, let's rearrange this to find my number of moles of NaOH then is going to equal my total minus my number of moles of sodium carbonate. That's going to give me 6.93 10 to the minus 3 moles. Brill, so we've done E. Last thing they want me to do now is I'm going to calculate the concentration of each in the original sample. So to do this, I've got to know my number of moles for each. I've got that. I need to know the volume. Well, I can see that my volume is 20. I've just circled that, and I'll circle it again in blue to show you. That mixture of base is 20, so I've also got my volume. So we're now going to calculate the concentration for each one. So finally, for F, my job is to find the concentration of NaOH and the concentration of Na2CO3. So my number of moles, we're going to do it for both of them with N over V. For concentration of sodium hydroxide, I'm going to do my number of moles, which is 6.93 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by the volume. And that's going to give me 0.346 moles per decimeter cubed. And for sodium carbonate, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my number of moles, which is 3.15 times 10 to the minus 3 going to divide it by that same volume because they're in the same flask and that's going to now give me 0 0.157 moles per decimeter cubed. Now if you are unsure of anything on this video I would encourage you to go back and look through okay make sure you really pay attention to that success criteria those six steps I said so just to remind you before you go on to do your practice questions Work out what's happening in title one. Calculate the number of moles of acid required for each one. Use this number of moles of acid to calculate the number of moles for each of your bases. And then finally calculate the concentration of each in the original sample. So here is a practice question for you. Make sure you pause it now. If you need to rever reverse rewind, go have a look at that. And then check your answers. Hope to see you on another OMG video soon.